Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're doing well out there. So since my last video on the Delta variant, there have been so many updates, but I haven't really had a chance to catch up and talk to you guys about it just because I've been so busy in the ICU. But in this video, I want to talk about breakthrough cases, what this means for our vaccine efficacy. And I also want to talk about booster doses and if you're the right candidate for them. Because today, August 13th, the FDA actually approves the booster doses for specific populations and we'll talk about that today. So let's get started. So before we begin, first off I want to say thank you for supporting so far. I have like 37 subscribers and like 400 views which is amazing so far after three videos. Um, but if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Freddy. I'm a critical care pharmacist and on this channel, Traumacist Rx, my focus is on making healthcare information easier for you to understand so that way you can make better decisions in your own life. And if you're returning to the channel, welcome back. Make sure to always smash the like button and subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so that way you can get notified when my next video gets uploaded. I also just want to let you know there's a lot of interesting things in the descriptions of all my videos, including timestamps so you could skip to the information you need faster. There's also links to more resources for your learning. And I also have links to support the channel further, such as buymeacoffee.com slash traumacistrx. I also have affiliate links in the description below, where if you click on them and buy something within 24 hours, it doesn't matter what it is, but anything, Amazon will actually use some of your purchase as part of a commission to support the channel. So yeah, check out all the links below, see if there's anything uh, you are interested, and please feel free to let me know if you want me to include anything else in the description below. I also wanted to let you know that I have an Instagram account where I post more information and more educational materials there to supplement some of my YouTube stuff and just get up, get the word out much faster. So if you're interested in all that, please take a look. And now let's get to the actual video. So it seems like every time we turn on the news, one of the biggest things on the headline is breakthrough cases or patient with who's fully vaccinated now has coronavirus and things like that. And yes, as someone who's working in the hospital in a COVID unit, we do have rare cases of people who are fully vaccinated and those are definitely patients that are more high risk, age 65 plus and older, and also those with multiple comorbidities. But anyways, let's talk about what our current case number is, our vaccination rate is, in order to figure out if vaccines are actually working. So the current count of daily cases here in the United States is between 130 and 140,000 as of August 13th. So this is definitely a lot and something to be concerning about, especially because we are in summer where we shouldn't see this many cases of any respiratory viruses and also because it is triple the amount of cases we had at the same time last year. But that is probably in part due to the Delta virus, which I mentioned was about two to three times more contagious than the normal wild type variants we had last year. As far as vaccination rate, 70% of Americans have at least one dose, which is great. But actually, our total herd immunity is more on the fully vaccinated side, which is currently 50% of Americans. And remember, I said in my last video, we need about, at this point, maybe 70 to 85 and maybe even 90% herd immunity just because Delta variant is so contagious. So a daily case is trending up. How does this affect our vaccine efficacy? Should we even get the vaccine if we're not vaccinated or should we just wait it out? at home. So one, you definitely should get vaccinated, but we should take a look at what the vaccines are actually designed to do. And that is to reduce hospitalization, reduce severe infection, and also reduce death, which is actually doing really well, but don't let me tell you. Let's look at the data. So if you're seeing this slide right now on your screen, this is one of the slides that was actually leaked from the CDC PowerPoint a few weeks ago. And this is the actual raw data. What you can see is pretty phenomenal. And if you're not quite sure how to read this graph, let's walk through it together so that way you can understand how effective these vaccines really are. So looking at this, you can see the blue and green bars. The blue bars represent vaccinated individuals while the green bars represent unvaccinated individuals. So when you look at this graph as a whole, you can see that on the left most column, you can see patients who are unvaccinated have an eight times more likelihood of testing positive for COVID-19, whether it's asymptomatic or symptomatic infection. Now, if you move towards the right of the graph, you can see that there's a 25 times less chance of getting COVID-19 and going to the hospital or dying from COVID-19, which is pretty amazing when you look at all the data together. Furthermore, if you look to the graph, on the right of it, you could see 32,000 breakthrough cases of fully vaccinated individuals over 162 million fully vaccinated individuals total. So let's do some math here. I know that this channel is not about math, but let's do math together. 
As you can see from this equation, 32,000 breakthrough cases out of 162 million fully vaccinated individuals is only 0.02% chance of getting COVID-19. So when we think about breakthrough cases, this is what I want you to think about. There is a less than 1% chance of getting COVID-19 when you're fully vaccinated. So let's just reiterate some of these points. Are breakthrough cases happening in, in vaccinated individuals? Yes. Are there a lot of cases? No. As you can see, it's less than 1% chance of getting a breakthrough COVID-19 case once you're fully vaccinated. And if you're unvaccinated, you are 20 to 5 times more likely to go to the hospital because of COVID-19. So let's kind of just recap that really quick because I ran through a lot of numbers right there. So let's start off from the top. Yes, cases are rising. There's over 130,000 cases per day. Yes, we are not at herd immunity. We have 50% fully vaccinated. Do the vaccines work? Yes. The vaccines work exceptionally well and you are more likely to die from COVID-19 if you're unvaccinated, at least 25 times more likely than someone who's fully vaccinated. One point I also almost forgot to reiterate is that as more and more people get vaccinated, it's more likely that we will have more and more breakthrough cases. So again, this doesn't mean that our vaccines are not working. It just means that the population that is vaccinated is actually getting bigger, which means there's a bigger chance that these people will get a COVID-19 infection. All right, so let's switch gears and talk about booster doses. So as of today, booster doses have now been approved by the FDA and the CDC for patients who are immunocompromised. Immunocompromised patients in general are those who have immune systems that don't act or function the same way that the average population acts. So for instance, in terms of the vaccine, what we've seen is that initially in immunocompromised patients, their immune system has had a good response, but over time, their immune system protection against COVID-19 has slowly declined. And currently, as far as the data we're seeing with immunocompromised patients, is that their protection or vaccine efficacy is between 71 and 80%. So still really good against COVID-19, but we can do a lot better and we've seen in the average population, 88 to 95% vaccine efficacy. What we are really concerned about is that as far as hospitalization goes, vaccine efficacy dropped from the 90s all the way down to 59%. And that is why we run into trouble where we can see more patients who are vaccinated and immunocompromised going to the hospital without a booster dose. And that is why the CDC and FDA are recommending a booster dose at this time. It's just to provide more protection. It doesn't mean our vaccines don't work, but it's to give this specific population a boost so they are more protected, especially this fall. So what if you are not immunocompromised and you don't fall into the specific subset population? Should you get the vaccine or should you sneak a dose just to be safe because we know the vaccines are pretty safe? The answer is no. First of all, that's not recommended by the FDA, CDC, or even the ACIP. And we really shouldn't be hoarding doses for those who actually need it. Remember, we are only at 50% fully vaccinated. In order for us to beat COVID-19 specifically, as far as herd immunity, we need to be upwards of 70%, and in some, some cases, we need to be up 90%. And we're not even really close to that yet. So right now, what we need to do as a population Try to get those unvaccinated, fully vaccinated as soon as possible. Remember, it takes two doses in most cases and up to eight weeks to get that full immunity. We also need to get those who are immunocompromised the, the opportunity to get an extra dose so that way they can be protected, especially this fall. And we need to just make sure that we are promoting those two things. If you're a fully vaccinated, part of the average population without immunocompromised immune systems, you really are protected and as I've said earlier in this video, you're very protected from hospitalization and death at least 25 times less likely. So with that being said, that's all I got for you as far as updates right now. In another video, I do want to talk about masking because that's also another update that I, I haven't had a chance to look at. But if you did like this video and what I talked about, please consider smashing the like button and subscribing. I'm trying to get more videos out to you guys because there's a lot of good information but we're really busy in the ICU at the moment. So bear with me, but anyways, thanks for watching all the way through. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.